Good afternoon. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in growing zone 6B in New England where autumn has finally dropped. It is gorgeous out. Blue sky, a little bit of a nip in the air, all the trees are turning. Just loving it right now. Autumn also heralds the arrival of soup. So I'm going to get on to that today. Bill and I have a whole bunch of stuff planned for the day and we're going to be going right up until dinner. So this is one of those crock pot recipes. I can just pop in there and it'll be done by the time we are done too. And all I'll have to do is make some rice. I've got this really great recipe that started out as a not so great recipe. And you can see I have amended that nonsense. The original recipe didn't even have salt in it or garlic. And I was like, mm, I don't know about this. So there wound up being a lot of seasoning afterwards and I rewrote the recipe to account for that. So we're gonna make a stuffed pepper soup. Come on along. This recipe starts with two pounds of ground beef. I went with the 90% lean on this so that I don't have to do too much draining. Um, I'm just going to do a dribble, like two tablespoons worth of oil. Got a diced medium onion in here and about five cloves of chopped garlic. And to this, I'm going to add a good four-finger pinch of salt. And some fresh ground black pepper. And I'm just going to fry these for a moment until they soften a little bit. Now that they're translucent, I'm going to add my beef. And we're going to saute this with the onions and garlic until it is browned all over. And that'll take us about seven, eight minutes. All right, you see all this liquid? We're gonna need to drain that in order to get this to cook a little nicer. And I like to do, and I like to do that with a turkey baster. I've got my measuring cup off to the side. So I'm going in with the bulb squeezed. Okay, so we've got most of the liquid out of there. And this is starting to brown nicely. To our beef, we're gonna add four tablespoons of tomato paste. That's incorporated. I'm going to add another four finger pinch of salt, and a tablespoon of oregano, and a teaspoon of basil. Our beef is browned, our tomato paste is incorporated, and our spices are in there, so it's time to get it over to the crock pot. This is definitely a Midwestern recombinative kind of cooking. Um, 
I think of Neil Stevenson every time I make this. He has a book called Read, Ream D, um, which is a play on Read Me. And in that he talks about Midwestern recombinative cooking. I spent time in Ohio, I can do that. <laughs> so we're gonna add some cans and stuff to this. Hello, hello Sig. Uh, this calls for 28 ounces of diced and or crushed tomatoes. I'm gonna go with some petite diced tomatoes. Doesn't matter which brand you use. Um, I tend to stay away from the stuff that has other things added to it like garlic or um, some of them have basil in them. I like the plain ones for this. So we're gonna do that. I'm also going to add to it a pint of the Fotel that I made. I ran out of the little jars, so I had to go with pints. Um, and we're gonna add a box, four cups of beef broth and our diced red and green bell peppers. You have options at this point. If you have a lot of day in front of you, go ahead and put it on low, and that can run eight to 10 hours if you want. I'm gonna run it on high today for five to six hours. I'm gonna check it around the four hour mark, and at that point, depending on how long it's gonna be until we wanna sit down to dinner and how long the rice is gonna take, I may put it on warm for that last little bit. What we're waiting to see is those peppers break down a little bit, make it a little more juicy. Um, and that's it. That's it. Super easy. I'll make rice right before we sit down and we'll have dinner. So I'm going to go get my stuff done. I got a coop to clean among other things and I will see you at dinner time. Check it out. I got the tomato paste off my face. So somebody I'm sure is going to ask, what the heck was this all about in the coop? This is just some diatomaceous earth. I stuck it in one of these, um, and maybe it's for powdered sugar. I bought it at the restaurant supply. And so you just have to upend it and like spank it a little on the bottom. And it totally lays out a nice layer for you. So, hey. Hit up your restaurant supply store. End of October, and this is what's left. I've definitely got some zinnias and some marigolds to trim. See that bok choy? Mm-hmm. That girl's gonna be dinner, and maybe pieces of the other ones that the loopers munched on, but. Got a handful of green tomatoes. I do not think those are going to ripen. I'll have to bring them in and fry them. Oh, darn. Let's us talk about these tomatillos. I'm gonna need to pull them sometime really soon, and I just, it just hurts my heart a little bit. <laughs> but that's what we have to do to get the garden ready to go to bed for the winter. But yeah, whole bunch of tomatillos that have to come out of the ground. Not today.
not today, death, not today. Um, probably midweek, I'll get on top of those. Can you just believe these marigolds? Ah, oh, they are still blooming. And look at this other one over here. Just look at these marigolds. There is a veritable sea of marigolds. I'm gonna have such a bunch of bouquets. But wait, there's more. One hundred percent, you know I am gonna grab some of those seed heads. These are the most prolific and gorgeous marigolds I have ever grown. So I'm definitely gonna be grabbing some of those seed heads to uh, start next year's business. And then there's the Brussels sprouts, which they're looking pretty raggedy on top. But hey, look at all the tiny cabbages. So I think we're gonna have a handful of Brussels sprouts. And will you look at this nonsense? Those Chinese noodle beans are totally making noodle beans. These noodle beans are just such a hoot. Look at these guys. I don't know when we will get that frost that's coming. There's a frost coming. There's always a frost coming in October, um, but we are late into October. So there's a frost coming soon. Um, and these aren't quite ready yet, but I'm sure hoping we get to try these out. This is my first year growing these and I just want to know what they taste like. So <laughs> maybe the weather will hold out just a little bit longer for us. So pretty much everything needs a trim in here to get it ready to go to bed. Um, we're gonna come in here probably sometime this week or next weekend, bring in a glorious bouquet of marigolds and any of the zinnias that are ready, and then pull plants and run it over with the lawnmower and start letting the chickens run in here. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I think they're going to love the garden. Maybe I will leave them some marigolds for them to munch on because they, they really like marigolds. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We're about a week out from that kind of noise. In the meanwhile, I have errands I've got to run and stuff I got to put together. I've got some t-shirts that I'm doing, some batik work on that need to come out of the dye today and get the wax out. I've got to run to the farm store. Just lots and lots of, of little bits and pieces, but I will meet you back in the kitchen in a few hours and we will have dinner. It's six o'clock. We were going to put up the rice for dinner, but that's going to have to wait a hot minute because I just got an email from Bemis Nurseries that says, hey, you might want to cover your stuff up. We're going to have a frost tonight. So we are going to go out. Me and Bill are going to trundle out. It's we've got a little bit of light left and we're going to pull those tomatillo plants, drag them up to the porch and I'll pull the tomatillos off of them while I'm making rice. Dinner is coming. Dinner is coming. I know it looks like daytime on the camera, but to give you an idea, the twinkle lights just came on. Their sensors said it's getting dark. So we're going to just pick these tomatillos, change my mind about dragging them onto the porch. We're just going to uproot plants, divest them of their tomatillos and bring them inside. Here we go. I'm tired and there's time I can't account for Here in your living room lost in your books and legacy All these days I've been scrambling through your pages Leave me ink so I have So this is our sunset tomatillo haul. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably six to eight pounds worth of tomatillos. If I've got enough of the perfectly ripe ones to do another batch of the roasted salsa verde, I will do that. And then the littler ones that filled up the husk, um, like, like this one, um, these ones, Sweet Phaedra this evening mentioned just such a genius idea. She said that she cuts them into wedges and then pops them in the freezer on cookie sheets and once they're frozen, puts them in a bag for later. And 
I think I'm gonna do that with a bunch of the uh, smaller, very ripe ones. So in the meanwhile, rice is cooking. <laughs> we made it to dinner and I am proud of us. We have been moving since what, seven o'clock this morning and got stuff done and hurrah, hurrah, dinner is waiting for us. And then some. And then some. <laughs> so we dive in? We should dive in. Let's see. Very hot. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's it's rich and tomatoey, and it really does mimic the, uh, and it really does mimic a stuffed pepper. It, this is super nice. Mm -hmm. This is good for the weather. Mm. It's good for the soul. Yeah, <laughs> it's warming. <Yes. laughs> it's just a touch spicy from the Rotel, not very much. It's mostly just a nice peppery flavor on that. Thanks for hanging out with us today while we got stuff done in the garden and around the property. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. You can't really tell from the camera, but the twinkle lights are on already out here so we know it's it's pretty dim <laughs>